he provided he's already provided everything you need he's already provided every promise you can claim Amen. Well, God bless you. I greet you tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Hannah, God bless you. Good to have you here. Amen. Looking forward to a good time in His presence. Let's sing number uh, 490. <clears throat> We're floating down the stream of time. We have no long to stay. The stormy clouds of darkness will turn to brightest day. Then let us all take courage, for we're not left alone. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. So cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the cold and shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Sometimes the devil tempts me and says it's all in vain. Try to live a Christian life and walk in Jesus' name. But then we hear the Master say, I'll lend you a helping hand. And if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to the land. Then cheer, my brother, cheer, our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here, we're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. The lifeboat soon is coming by faith. Faith I see as she sweeps through the water to rescue you and me and land us safely in the port with friends we love so dear. Get ready, cries the captain. Oh, look, she's almost here. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet on the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. Lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Oh, now the time to get on board while she is passing by. But if you stand and wait too long, you shall forever die. The fare is paid for one and all, the captain bids you come. And get on board the lifeboat, she'll carry you safely home. Then cheer, my brother, cheer, our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved one we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here, we're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Amen. Why don't we stand? This world is not my home. For 524. <clears throat> 
This world is not my home I'm just a passing through For my treasures are laid up Somewhere beyond the blue The angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you If heaven is not my home then, Lord, what will I do? Angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. I fixed it up with Jesus. Many Let's worship Him tonight. Let's sing that song number 272. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Amen. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we love You. We lift Your name in all the earth. in our praises as your people declare your mighty word blessed be the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come blessed be the Lord In my praises, as your people declare your mighty words, blessed be the Lord God, <coughs> who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who lives forevermore. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. 
As we get ready to go to prayer, number 909, Master of the Wind. I know the Master of the Wind. Start with the chorus. I know the Master of the Wind. I know the Maker of the rain. He can calm the storm and make sun to shine again. I know the master of the wind. My boat of life sails on the troubled sea. Ever there's a wind in my sail. But my heavenly father, he over me when the breeze turns in to again. Yes, I know the master of the wind. Oh, yes, I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm and make sun to shine again. I know the master of the wind. Sometimes I soar like an eagle in the sky. Among the peaks my soul can be found. But an unexpected storm may drive me from the high. It may bring me low, but it will never bring me down. I know the master of the wind. Yes, I do. I know the maker of rain. He can calm the storm and make sun to shine again. I know the master of the wind. Sing it one last time. Master of the wind, yes I do, I know the maker of the rain, he can calm the storm and make the sun to shine again, I know the master of the wind. Thank you Lord, amen. Brother David, if you'd come up there and just open the service in prayer. I just want to remember Brother Roger and Sister Tana Waller in prayer. They have a special need, and Sister Kristen Nash is not feeling well tonight. And Sister Carrie has asked to remember her as well tonight. All day she's been suffering some lightheadedness and headaches. So she's just asked that we pray, her, pray for her. Amen. We know where we are. We're in the house of deliverance. Amen. So let's lift up our sister Carrie. If you have a need tonight, raise your hand to our Heavenly Father. He watches over you. Amen. When the breeze turns into a gale. Amen. Come, Brother David. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, yes, we do know. And I'm glad that we can know and do know. Being born of one spirit, we're in the house of deliverance. We thank you for that, Lord, and where you are, where your people, your people is, Lord. And here we are associated in this building, but here, Lord, we're in the house of deliverance. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that just your prophet said, what comes, what difference does it make what comes or goes when we know you're in the control room of our soul. We thank you for that great reality, that great revelation of your presence revealing the Son of Man again, as you promised it would be in this hour. 
We're so thankful, Father, for the reality that we're hid away in Christ, safe. We can let off the pressure. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray that you remember the Waller family. You know this special need. We ask you to minister to that need. We're not asking this in vain. We come as children of God, born of the Spirit of God, having your name, which we present before the throne. And with that authority, Lord, we call for their deliverance. And our sister Carrie, may she feel completely whole and delivered, leaving this service tonight because of the word that is sent forth. Father, for you sent your word and healed them. We thank you for this. Our sister Kristen, not well, Father. We ask for her deliverance in her body. Now, Father, we're under expectation to hear you speak through a man. Father, your voice is in the bride. She is that voice. She's the promised word for the hour made manifest. Lord, we thank you that we can be assembled and know and know that we know that we are delivered and freed. Lord, we thank you for this. Now, Lord, bless your word. And we ask this for thy glory in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Thank you. You may have your seats. <clears throat> Amen. As we get ready to receive our pastor, hear the word, let's sing number 1047. Sing it as a prayer. It's a song, a prayerful song. Lord, I lift your name. Amen. Lord, my heart can grow so far away and cold and yet for me your love is still the same Lord I bend my knee in awe and fear of my head bowed down in reverence to your name. Lord, I lift your name, your holy name, Jehovah God. is to be filled with the Spirit fire. My purpose is to worship you alone. Open up my soul to worship and adore, to be a fragrance offered to your
comforter and king. Let's just stand and sing the chorus again. Lord, I lift your name. lift our voice, give praise to him this evening, saints. He truly is, amen, our risen lamb. Not just me, but our risen lamb. And he is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of everything we can give to him. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come into the house of God with saints of like precious faith and join our hearts, Lord, and our spirit and our voices together in worship to you tonight. Oh, Father, we love you. We adore you. Father, I ask on behalf, Lord, help me, Lord, to learn how to express, Lord, what I truly heart. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Is there any happy people here tonight? Hallelujah. I tell you, it's, uh, you know, just things happen in life. And, you know, if we're not careful, we'll talk about this, Lord willing, in just a little bit. But Satan, you know, he knows how to put the damper. You know, if you take a stove and you, you put the damper down on that, you can just all but kill the fire. And the devil doesn't care that we have a little fire. He just doesn't want to turn it into a bonfire, which turns into a runaway fire that he can't damper. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's not forget our brother Sergei and our brother Vasily and um, anyone else maybe that's missing tonight, our sister Miriam and in Arizona there with their daughter. Just pray the Lord would just uh, uh, be very present with them. Yeah. Also to remember our brother Chris, brother Flint, our hunting. Amen. Uh, so maybe they'll be successful. You know, I've always, always really enjoyed hunting, but I found my success at uh, Winco was 100%. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you just do that. But... God's good, and it's not just about finding something, but it's time together and fellowship in the great outdoors, God's creation, and, and how beautiful that is. Amen. And let's not forget this coming Sunday, 5 o'clock, communion here at the church. Amen. And uh, so let's just turn in our Bibles this evening. I uh, just want to uh, 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 go into this and be timely tonight. Got always more you know saints I, I, I if you guys could just see my heart I, I'm just like Lord I just want to bring something profound simple and short to the saints and it always turns into something that is convoluted deluded and long and I'm like Lord help me but I just pray saints as we press to the mark of the high calling that the Lord just takes the word that's preached ministered from this pulpit and just makes it real in our hearts we don't need a great man with great words. We need a great God in our midst and a great spirit to move upon us. And so we just thank the Lord for that. I want to turn to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Amen. Brothers, did we turn this screen off or is it not working? Or... No? Okay. Well, that's good. I want to preach to you. Go backwards here. I want to do this. I want to preach to you this very, very simple little thought of this little light Amen. of mine. You see, we can get all excited, saints, and, and uh, I don't want to be rude about it, but we can get all excited and look at the great men in our lives, great ministers, prophet, etc. And we can focus and say, they, this happened and this happened and this happened. But let's stop tonight, take a little bit of time, and look at this little light of mine. Amen. Amen. The little light that 
God has given to you and I. Amen. He didn't want us. Now, you can find the, the foundation or fundamentals of this in the message, not Brother Brown's exact words, but we're not looking to live in the glow of someone else. We want to live Amen. in the light. Amen. And so as we press to the mark of the high calling, God loves you and I so much that he sent that little beam of light wherever we were on the face of the earth. It didn't matter north, south, east, west, what continent. None of that mattered. God says, I have, as it were, a ray or a beam of light for you. And uh, to me, it just stirs my heart very sad. They'll be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, see, it moves from somewhat impersonal. Look how this suddenly now takes a little shift. Blessed are ye. No longer vague, not just one of the crowd, but God wanting to single you out. Yeah. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost his savor Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Now, I want, you to, I want you to catch this, saints. I think if we catch the real essence of verse 13, it'll be very enlightening to us. Amen. When we catch that, when I lose my feeling, you use, lose your feeling, for the saints. When we no longer care about the little blanket native, when we no longer care about the drunk or the ill-famed dressed woman on the street, when we no longer care about the one down the pew from us, when we no longer... Do I need to go any further? You see, when we have lost that, what did the prophet of God see? He, he stops and he says, you know what? I lost my feeling for the people. You see, my brother and sister, some would say, how dare you? You're going to judge the prophet by this scripture. He judged himself. I don't have to judge him. He judged himself. He said, I lost my feeling for the people and I had to get away from them. Imagine us preachers of just a little assembly like this and we just feel like we have it so rough. And the prophet dealt with these spirits of the age, dealt with all this ecumenical spirit. Satan poured everything against him. And in his flesh, he got battered down, just like David said in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Though my enemy cast me to the dirt. Mm -hmm. But you see, God knows what he's doing. So if we've lost that, our effectiveness as a Christian diminishes right with that loss of feeling for the people. No. Ye, I love this. See, it's now becoming more of this scripture here. Chapter 5, more and more personal. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do we light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Can we say amen to the word tonight? Yes. Heavenly Father, just ask for your blessings. Lord, give us wisdom and leadership tonight, we pray in your name. Amen. You may be seated. As I read these scriptures, one of the first things that it speaks to my heart is this beautiful, oh, I don't know if I can express it quite but this absolutely gorgeous opportunity that God gives for us to, to show the world our Lord Jesus Christ. This opportunity to, uh, for the world to see Christ in us, see Christ in you. And 
You know, it, it is just uh, uh, oftentimes if we're not careful, Satan will try to just uh, by the cares of life rob uh, this victory that we have in our joy of who we are in Jesus Christ. And so as Satan just batters us and, and the things of life just wear and wear and wear, uh, you know, we find ourselves, we start to take things inwardly into ourself and we find ourselves, uh, you might say in a sense, offended by the things of life and we find ourselves struggling to enter into the Word or, or feel the uplifting power of the Word and we realize that that is just Satan trying to, as we spoke, uh, on Sunday, Satan trying to take you hostage. And so as it is, if he can take your mind hostage, your heart uh, or your body, then, you know, he's uh, accomplished a great thing. But uh, we look here in this and we see these words. Uh, if you have a red letter Bible, you see these words spoken by our Lord Jesus. And it's there if you go to the beginning of that scripture, uh, verse 1, you'll see that this, my brother and sister, uh, was actually, uh, the, it tells us that Jesus, when he saw the multitude, he then turned and went up into the mountain. But you know, look at this. God sometimes just lets little things turn us one way or the other. And it's still God in control, right? And Jesus sees this uh, uh, this great multitude and He turns, goes up into the mountain, the apostles go with Him. And what a lovely time, my brother and sister, that God grants to them because they now get a mountaintop experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, I would love to have a mountaintop experience with the Lord Jesus Christ, to sit there and have Him speak to me and just to pour out His Word to us. But you know what? If we look correctly at the Word, we have every opportunity to have our mountaintop experience. Because He is the Word and the Word is present with us and we take the Word with us and we literally in the right spirit, the right attitude, the right approach can sit on the mountaintop and have our Lord Jesus Christ speak to us. Amen. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? You know, so many people, well, you know, I would have loved to have been there. You know, if I had been there, I would have, I would have been a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Well, if you would have been a faithful follower there, you'll be a faithful follower here. Amen. So we just thank the Lord for His grace and mercy. So this mountaintop experience, He starts to speak to the apostles. And, and my brother and sister, truly, well, I just have to admit, that would be such an incredible experience. Amen. But you know, Jesus didn't come and just rah-rah them and pat them on the back. He actually spoke the words that was necessary to, if you don't mind me using this phrase, to trim the fat. He, he was there to cut away those things that were unnecessary to uh, lay. He was laying in uh, food for due season, my brother and sister. And imagine now these apostles, as time goes on, how uh, some good, right? Uh, and uh, experiences that they're like, yep, this is what he was talking about. But think about how it is that God, knowing what is necessary in our life, he sometimes speaks words like Peter heard. Now you know in your heart, you don't even need an imagination that Peter actually thought our Lord Jesus Christ was wrong. He literally in his heart was like, there's no way I would do that. But look how strong the spirits are. Really, it is just, let's look at the picture. Look how strong the spirits are. But look, it's not just that he was overcome with the spirit, but I want you to know that everything happened so quickly and in such a fashion. Take this to your heart. In such a fashion that we can be shouting on the rooftop one day and the next day doubting our experience. Because we get battered and it's just too much. It overwhelms us in the human element. And, and we're there. And so here's Peter. There ain't no way I'll deny my Lord Jesus Christ. Now imagine how crushing it must have been in his heart when that cock crowed. He would have been a man that was just so broken in his spirit that he literally, I can just see it, my brother and sister, him declaring, I am of no value to my Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, there was a little something. Oh, I hope you don't take this too personal tonight. But a little something in our spirit sometimes that we hold on to so desperately. It is somehow we claim it in our identity. And that is actually what's keeping us from a complete surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has promised that He would lead us and guide us into all truth. And so He's going to come, put you in a situation that breaks that little thing you hold so tight. But was Peter worse off or better off? 
Come on, saints. Amen. He was better off to have that broken in his life. And we would be better off if we would let the Lord break things in our lives. See, he's not here just to crush us, my brother and sister. He's here. The fragrance, the essence of the fragrance is not released or revealed until the crushing of the flower. And God says, you know what? I know what's in you. The prophet of God said, everything you need to make the rapture is in you. Now, my brother and sister, if that's bottled up in something in our life, then God has promised he's going to come. He's going to crush that to release the fragrance of faith. Amen. The essence of who we are in Jesus Christ must be released. And he will do what is necessary. I hope that we can lift our hands on that day and say, oh, Lord, thank you. Instead of. Oh, pitiful man that I am. Amen. So we see these words, this mountaintop experience. They were admonished. They were encouraged. Now, I want you to catch this. And, and I hope that I can really express this in the way that I felt like the Lord laid it upon my heart. You see, my brother and sister, I believe tonight. Yes, the naysayers say that you're a bunch of crackpots. Is it okay to talk straight? The naysayers say you're a bunch of crackpots, right? That you're whatever. But you know what? I can sit here tonight and I can seriously look, not just picking one man or woman or family or something, but I can say I don't see any other position on the earth that I would like to trade mine for. This is nothing about this person or that person, that church, that church, that pastor, that pastor. But looking at our own life, I trust that you can say amen to this. Oh, you know, I was talking with hired man today. And he brought up something about somebody he knew that won a lottery. And he's like, mucho hmm. malo. That means very bad. Totally messed him up. And then I got to joking with him because he's that kind of man. I said, come on, tell me, Jesus, surely, surely you could use a little more money. And he was like, of course I could use more money, just like you. But not if it does that to me. And he says, it causes me to think, what is good for me and what is bad for me? And I want what is good for me. Can we say tonight we're blessed? I mean really, truly from the depths of our heart. Put everything out and just look at that and say, is my life blessed or not? Is God dealing with me? Is God hearing my prayers? Is my, my life... Oh, but Brother Paul... Yeah, I know. Tires go flat. Cars run out of gas. Power bills have to be paid. All of that goes on. But... The scripture says it happens to the rich and the poor. Amen. And it happens to the righteous and the unrighteous. Wait, so if we give up our righteousness, we still got these problems. And if we inherited millions, we would still have these problems. So God, through his word, has declared that we are truly a blessed people. Now, I want to lay a foundation for you here. Let's go, brothers, to uh, Luke, the first chapter. Uh, we're going back now is uh, Luke's account of uh, what happened with uh, Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. That's me. Can someone say amen? Amen. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Do you realize, my brother and sister, if you'll take this into the Word of God, and if we were going to stay here all night, I could lay this out bit by bit for you, but I believe as established believers, you can put this in place. As we look tonight, this Scripture is actually speaking of you and I. 
Amen. It is not something uh, 2,000 plus years ago, but this is a living scripture tonight because God sent an angel, right? That's what prophets are defined in the Word. Uh, God sent an angel and come and said that you are highly favored. You are blessed to be of those of this generation that names are in the Lamb's book of life. You talk about a blessing, my brother and sister. You talk about being highly favored. Now the definition of blessed, or it's a second part definition of blessed, is highly favored. Now can I just remind you a bit here, it would be if we kind of feel bad for ourselves, uh, highly favored are the poor in spirit. Highly favored are those that mourn. Highly favored are the meek. Highly favored are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Are you with me? Yeah. Highly favored, my brother and sister, to the merciful. Highly favored to those pure of heart. Highly favored to the peacemakers. Highly favored those that are persecuted. We often look at this and say, well, okay, that's wonderful, that's wonderful, but it doesn't feel. But my brother and sister, you see, Mary didn't get off with just having a child and walking away with no pain and travail. Mary became an object of ridicule. She became an outcast, and she bore that her whole life. It never diminished, it never went away, it was never explained away. Because how are you going to convince someone, now pardon, we have children here, so I just want to express this correct. How are you going to claim or express that I now am having a child and I have never known a man? No one is going to accept that as an explanation. And how would you feel as you have went from a charmed young lady into someone that is looked with ridicule and scorn and be able to say, I am blessed. But you see, to bring this into our day, because I want to keep this short, not draw it out, my brother and sister, this that has come, an angel speaking, you have found favor with God. Oh, I tell you, my brother and sister found it before the foundation of the world, when He wrote my name and wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life, He was bestowing favor upon us. He was pouring out blessing upon us. And what we see and feel and hear all of this today is the devil trying to explain it away, trying to rob you of it, trying to camouflage it, trying to hold it hostage. All of that is just what we see. And yet we can look and what seems so great in what Satan is doing Let's go back to what the angel said. Without Mary, filled with the Holy Ghost, because she had God in her, right? So we can take this in that natural, she had the Holy Ghost. John would have been born, stillborn. John would have had, follow me, a denominational experience and would have been sending all these people to the temple to sign up just like they had for generations. A stillborn spirit. But at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. It filled Him with the Holy Ghost right there in the womb. And I want to tell you tonight, saints, I hope you catch this and correlate it, my brother and sister, that as the Word come forth, we were filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb of God's Word. Amen. We were brought to a place that we were now birthed as a living word in a generation to be expressed of the life of Jesus Christ. And that Word had to come through that name. Amen. Amen. It's no other way can we come. Hallelujah. So here it is, we see now that she is troubled by this salutation. But I want to focus tonight so I can move on quickly. That we'll look at this and realize that being all of this that he is here in the Scripture, as we're looking in Matthew, to realize all of that is us truly finding favor with God. Just as Mary did. Well, Brother Paul, Mary's experience was supernatural. What is yours? What is your experience? If it's not supernatural, saints, we can go to any church in this city and get it. 
Hmm. <coughs> Hallelujah. So we look at this and see, blessed art thou among women, sisters, all the way from our children. Sisters, blessed art thou among women. We live in a world today, and this might come across a little harsh. Women with dangling earrings and hair as short as mine, painted up like a road sign. Look you in the face and say, I have the Holy Ghost. See how Satan has convoluted this? No reference, no foundation back to word. We're not criticizing them. I hope that tomorrow they would wake up or maybe tonight when they would go to bed that the Spirit of God would speak to them. But remember, of all the young virgins, God chose Mary. God's choice. Hallelujah. Now, the Word said here that ye are the light of the world. I want to drive that home to you so you'll understand where I'm coming from in some of these statements that I will make in a little bit. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill and cannot be hid. And we see now men don't light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in my house that I have applied the token to. You know, I spoke on that the other day. I, I believe there was a little misunderstanding by some. You see, my brother and sister, we never stop. We never stop applying the token. I don't care if your kids are drunk. I don't care if your kids slept with every human on the face of the earth. You never stop. I know that's blunt. But we don't like to talk about that. We like to keep everything all flowery and all just... My brother and sister, the applying of the token in the house starts with the head of the house. Yeah. And it moves down through the proper course. Amen. Amen. We can't skip that. We can't do that. And if we don't have the house in order, what does the Word say about a minister? His house has to be in order. Right? We can't skip around that. We have to get the house in order. And I trust that we as priests of our home would recognize we have to get our house in order. If we want God to come down here, we can't be hypocrites. We have to be original. We have to do that to present that. And I don't mean to skin no one over this, but this is the things that the Lord laid on my heart. And so you see, as we come, now we apply this to the whole house. And as we apply it to the house, my brother and sister, let me just use it as a simple paraphrase. Our children, our husband, our wife, whatever it might be, breathe the same air in that house. And they dwell in the spirit of the house. If the spirit's a contrary spirit, then you wonder why your kids are rebellious. Right? If we dwell in a house of a submitted spirit, yielded to the Holy Ghost, then we will see and say, oh, isn't God moving amongst our children? It's, this is so beautiful. You see, we are the one who's setting the atmosphere and applying that. So there it is now. It giveth light unto all that are in the house. And I tell you, I'm not the best example. I hate to admit that in front of you, church, but I've got children that could tell you stories that you guys would go, oh my, I don't know if I even want that guy for my pastor. Amen? <laughs> reminds me of a little prank I pulled today, and I won't mention it here, but it, uh, you know, we got to be careful because sometimes the little things we do can become believable because of the actual view that we've left in people's hearts, Amen. in their minds, in their eyes. Yeah. Let me move on before I get this too complicated. You see, we look at this and realize now is for me. Either that or I don't need a wagon at all. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, it's God's. Amen. Amen. So the word declaring that we are the light of the world. Can someone say amen to that? Now look, John 1 through 5, you're, you're very familiar with this, but I just want to just lay this as a foundation. We move forward. Hopefully a little quicker here. John 1 through 5, 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I think we all say amen. We can agree with that. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. 
Hallelujah. We know the life is in Him. Certainly not in this world. And the life was the light of men. So now if we are going to be that light that is lit and placed on the hill, we have to have Jesus Christ, Almighty God, in us. Amen? Amen? But yet there's spirits in the land today, my brother and sister, just as it was, let me just, just jump back here, just as it was, and, and I preach this enough, I think Brother David's preached on it, but go back in the beginning and you'll see that, that the serpent depersonalized God and it went in the scripture for a brief period of time till the transgression took place, that he took him from being the Lord God to just God. And that's what's happening in the day that we're living in. People not making the connection or the correlation between the fact that who they are is because God has taken residence. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, Brother Donnie Reagan used it for talking about how a wolf would be in sheep's clothing. If any of you ever actually saw him preach that, and he does it so well, he got that wolf there, and he's just putting a leg on. Arm in, arm in, zip. But a wolf has to talk like a wolf. Now, I want to take a little different angle. If we could grasp this, and I know that people would say, he's lost his mind, and that's cool, I have. And I'm so glad I've lost my mind. But Almighty God come down in this hour. And he took you, Brother Trevor. And he put you on. Almighty God Himself stepped right inside and said, Trevor, as a man, could never do it. But me, He uses it in first person, I, in you. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, this man we know as Trevor, that could, if we, he ever bared his heart, which I have had, you know, those experiences to have very deep conversation. And I don't make light of that. I, I believe it's just an absolute beautiful example. And so in that, the devil says, there's Trevor. And God says, there's me. A whole different approach. The devil's looking at the weakness and God says, I'm looking at the vessel. And the vessel is mine. That's all he's looking for, my brother and sister. He was looking for the vessel that he could occupy. So it was there, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. Now we could not fulfill this scripture, my brother and sister, unless this wicked dark world was just exactly what it is right now. We could not in our day manifest this very light that God is wanting to be manifested if it wasn't a complete darkness in this world today. Amen. So it's the life that is the light. And this light is shining in darkness. And the darkness out here doesn't comprehend it at all. They don't, get a, they don't get one thing out of this. They just like think you're religious. That's the way they look at it. You're religious. You go to church. They don't make a connection of the word that God said, I would be walking on the, wor on the earth, in the world, in the last days, showing myself. Oh my, my brother and sister, there, there are literally many people believe there's got to be, as it is, the same spirit. Muhammad's got to come back. We've got to see Muhammad. Now that spirit's come over in the message and people are saying we've got to see. But they fail to see. The light is here. It's on the hill. It's shining. It's being made manifest. It is right here in the world we live in today. Amen. This blessing of light that is in you. Can someone say amen for that? This blessing of life that is in you is the very life of Jesus Christ manifested. It's no longer on the page. It is now walking on the earth once again, shining the living Word. Amen. That's what the Gospel is, my brother and sister. It's not just a dead letter. It's a living Word, a life. And the life is now shining into the world because God has come and is dwelling in you and manifested Himself through you. 
Now, sometimes we say kind of hard things, and I don't mean to hurt anybody, my brother and sister, but you see, we have to be careful that we don't deviate from the Word. Amen? We can't make the Word more than it is. We can't make it less than it is. Hallelujah. So what is this? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Right? This is Christ in you, the manifested light. This is the light for the day, my brother and sister. Now, when we get to the closing, if I can make it there, we'll go. Now, in to whom would we go, if they'll put that up? Now, you can go ahead and join church. It's a good thing. Or you can serve your creed, a good thing. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that might choke on creed, we actually have quite a few of them in the message. Because it's not all bad. It's just what's outside the word. The remnant of the creed is what is the problem. Hmm? Go look it up. Dig deep. Yep. You might belong to lodges. You might do these, these things. I have nothing to say against them. But what I'm trying to say this is, you need light. See, none of the rest of this matters, my brother and sister, because we can go right back to John 1, and that's why we have that as a reference tonight. You can go back to John 1 and realize there is the very, very, very fundamental of it all that God is light. And so if we're going to have light in this generation to fulfill this scripture, we've got to have him in us. Amen. Amen. You need light, and the light is Christ, and he's the only one that can give light. And you might turn that light on, a bunch of dirt down here with ever so many grains of corn in it, that light will never produce life. No, sir. That artificial light won't produce life. It takes the sunlight, the rays of the sunlight. You say, what difference is it if it's just as light as the sun? It hasn't got the power of the ray in it to bring forth life. And neither has the light of any creed or anything else outside of Jesus Christ. He's God's light. Hmm, beautiful, huh? Now look, I, I'm going to drive this home to you so there's just uh, we'll, we'll clinch it here in a few minutes. But my brother and sister, you have to have an understanding of the Godhead. You cannot have a convoluted, uh, a messed up kind of think I know what the Godhead is to understand this. Because then this is where in the whole world of the Trinity, they get all mixed up. And then you're sitting there and I, I like to study and look into these kind of things. And you have a very well-known name in the religious world explaining the Trinity. And then he makes a reference to a certain uh, deal. And, and then, you know, they even have a Trinity Institute, you know. And they're the ones that print the stuff and make it all very very clear and got all the explanations and he's contradicting. And then when they know they're contradicting, they say, well, it's just so confusing. It's really hard to explain. Hmm. We shouldn't have that problem. Amen. We can go back to the word of God and God promised to reveal that word to us. We shouldn't have a problem understanding the Godhead. Amen. We shouldn't have a problem trying to put this all together of who stands where and in what position this is. Now, if you've ever seen the official circle of the Trinity, and I won't go into explaining it, uh, they have the, you know, laid down very clearly of what is and what isn't. And then they use Scripture to defend it, but they forgot to use the Scriptures that rebut it. Isn't that interesting when you get in a, a, a situation like that? I have all kinds of evidence. What about this empirical evidence that says your evidence is wrong? I get to choose the evidence. It's my story. You've all heard that phrase. It's my story. I'll tell it like I want to. It's irrelevant whether truth or not is in the story. It's my story. So this uh, artificial light is not going to produce life. It takes a real sunlight. You say, what difference if it's just as light? It hasn't got the power of the ray in it to bring forth light. Now, my brother and sister, if you'll go back and study the age of the greenhouse, wasn't a hundred years ago. It took science delving into the right kind of light. And they've done all kinds of research. They literally have sequenced lights and they can study the behavior of plants. You'll never eat another head of lettuce after you watch this. Because you can hear it. And you'll think it's breathing and thinking. And 
flowers under the emphasis of rock and roll wilt. Flowers with sequenced lights following the light because they want light. Look at the lives of men and women always seeking something to enlighten the soul. Always, my brother and sister, now this sounds a little crass, forgive me, but one of the original founders that was doing them squirrel suits and flying suits, they asked him, how could you take such a risk? He, he drilled his head into a rock in a canyon. He no longer exists. How can you take a risk? And his answer was, I've done everything else, every thrill that there is. And this is where I'm at. Tries to fly between two spires in a canyon and misjudges it and his life is over. What was he doing? Looking for something. I'll equate it to you tonight. He was looking for light. He was looking for something that would actually bring something into his soul that he would be able to declare life is fulfilled. But he was unable to, to bring it to that place of life is fulfilled. See, so it doesn't have the power of the ray. No matter what we do, my brother and sister, it doesn't have the power of the ray to bring forth light. And neither has the light of any creed or anything else outside of Jesus Christ. He's God's light. And He's the one that gives us the Holy Spirit. And when we live in His presence, it makes us act different, look different, talk different, be different, because we're walking in the light. And now earlier I made those statements about people, and I, 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 this way, you know, I hope you understand me. It's never personal. To me, uh, God has like scorched that out of me. It's never personal, my brother and sister. You want to see those people have a good life. You want to see them know Jesus Christ. You want to see this. But you see, we get to see because of what God has showed us, because we're blessed to see in the Word. We get to see what the absence of light does to humanity. And so without that light there to turn them. Are you with me? It takes the light to turn them. And without that, they're walking in darkness. See, and we're blessed today and should be able to lift a hand and a heart and say, thank you, Lord, I am blessed. I have found favor because there's something in our hearts that desires to serve God. There's something in us, amen, as I've said before, under free moral agency. Aren't you glad for free moral agency? I'm in the house of God tonight, not because I'm the speaker. I'm not here tonight because I'm pastor. I'm here tonight because there's something in my heart that says this is who you are and the only thirst that there can be to satisfy it is right there in the perfect word of God amen. hallelujah amen now I want to move right on here real quick brothers let's bring up witness um, paragraph 20 amen now don't you see the great picture we in flesh are different now I'm not tooting no one's horn but it was sister Carrie's Absolute, if I could just express it to you. It was Sister Carrie in the restaurant. Blah, blah. I was just reading. And it's like, anything that generates that kind of excitement needs to be read. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Jerry's filled my phone up with quotes out of the oneness. But it's good. Because I'm going to quote a couple of them to you tonight. I read them already, but she was excited like Sister Carrie to share them. And that, that. But look at this now. We in flesh, okay, everybody reach up, pinch yourself. We're like a byproduct, a created being by holy wedlock. Mm, yeah. But in, the, but in spirit, we are sons and daughters. Not some other spirit, but the spirit of the living God. See, this is what separates this old flesh and our problems we have with this old flesh. Amen. It's what separates us, my brother and sister, from it controlling our life to realizing that this flesh is this flesh and it's a byproduct. Hallelujah. Amen. Not some other spirit, the spirit of the living God. We're in His likeness, in His unity, in the perfect image of the living God because we become sons and daughters. Not separated, but the same spirit, the same God, the same person joined in wedlock to the eternal. 
See how God planned it that we should not uh, we should be not a different but Him. Amen. Amen. We are not, my brother and sister, we say, well, how are we going to be like Him? Well, if God's looking on the heart, what does our heart look like? This flesh isn't going to do it. Unfortunately, my brother and sister, I hope you can take this with a little humor tonight. If we're going to all look the same in the flesh, which one are we going to be? You all want to look like me? No, there's a lot of heads shaking no, and some are very verbal. So who do we choose? But look what God's producing in the heart and soul of sons and daughters of God. A perfect image of the original Word. Being molded and formed. Have you ever been around, Brother Jason Will, you ever been around CNC machines? I think Brother Isaac has too. You can take a modern day CNC machine and you can program the computer on that. And if you're cutting something out of aluminum, you can feed 10,000 blocks of aluminum in that machine and every one of them will come out exactly the same and it's not the machine that's doing it. The machine is only producing what was placed in it to produce. So you can look at this machine and say, praise God, we're going to be in the perfect likeness of God. No, sir, it's what God loaded in this right here that's going to produce that. It will never be us. Take that program out of that CNC machine and it won't have any idea on how to produce what you want it to produce. You can take that completely over here and put it in another machine and produce exactly. And my brother and sister, if you can catch my thought tonight, that's why you will find that this message is producing the exact same heart and desire and life all the way around the backside of the earth. And no man ever produced that because it's what God loaded, as it were, into the hearts of sons and daughters of God that is producing that word. Hallelujah. But in not some other being of some other tribe, but a real union and offspring of the Almighty, done by a holy union. Now the body comes from mother and father, but the spirit comes from God. God separating himself as Adam was separated. I hope you caught the essence of that. Amen. Look, it's his spirit, his life, his light. The only light we have to walk in, my brother and sister, is not a light of this message unless you define this message as Jesus Christ. And when you define this message as Jesus Christ, it takes all the little shadows and the little doubts and all the confusing things and takes them away. Hmm. Let's go back to oneness again, paragraph 171. We're coming down to the end now. Watch. God sent the Holy Ghost. Somebody read the next line for me. Is that not powerful? Does that not wipe away a few shadows, that little confusion that comes? Got the Holy Ghost. I can take myself right back and I hope you don't think I've stepped too far. But I'm going to go right back and I'm going to peel back the pages, as it were, of John 1. Come on, saints. And I'm going to step right into John 1. And I am now the light to this world. Whoa, you sir took a lot on yourself, Paul. No, I didn't. I took the Word. And the Word is clearly showing us that we are the light to this generation. We are the light in this day. God could have come, put Himself right back just as He did in that day if He had chose. But He said, I've got some people on the earth and I'm going to be inside of them. But, oh, get this now. When a man and a woman are one, right? Truly in love. Truly married. Not just as a man said once, under the rules of engagement. Really married. In other words, a man, scripturally, is completely submitted to his wife. Oh no, around the message, we don't talk like that. 
No, sir, never talk like we are fully submitted to our wife. Go read your Bible. Amen. Go study the Word of God. Husbands, love your wives Amen. as Christ loved the church. What was it? Fully Amen. submitted. God didn't say, I'll save you up to a point. I'll save you up to the Philadelphia church age. Those of you in Laodicea, you're on your own. No, sir, fully submitted to the salvation of the body that he calls bride. Fully submitted. And the wife, according to the word, fully submitted to her husband. Remind me one time. Maybe I shouldn't even go there. I won't go there. Sometimes memories are not good. I'm going to tell you. It's, I'll tell you part of it. The humorous part. I knew a brother years ago, just terrible the way he treated his wife. Just terrible. He treated her, even as a teenager, I thought, my goodness, he treats her like she was a slave, not a wife. But I, I was around him long enough to see a metamorphosis taking place in this sister. We were sitting in a fellowship somewhere at a table and these brothers all sprawled out. I mean, you can't really get up and do much after 25,000 calories. And uh, he'd be sitting there in the chair and he'd say, Wife! Woman! Get me some coffee! And you used to see her. She just... She, metamorphosis is taking place. She started realizing as the word was being preached, she started changing. She changed before he did. Maybe she made him change. Probably not. It got to a point, he'd be like, wife, woman, get me some coffee. And she'd be in the other room. I can't hear you. Sounds rebellious, doesn't it? Until one day a brother sitting at that same table said, You know, why don't you just get up and get your own coffee? Maybe brother shaming ain't bad. I don't know. But my point, I'm saying, my brother and sister, the balance. The balance. That sister wasn't rebellious. She was looking for balance. She wasn't a slave. She wanted to serve him. And sometimes, Lord help us. Is this a confession booth? Sometimes we should put please. But we take it for granted. Sometimes we just take it for granted that this belongs to us. When the word of God said, come boldly to the throne of God, God did not want us to walk up there and say, Lord, you owe this to me. He wanted us to come boldly and say, Lord, you promised. You said, and I'm asking in your name, in your precious name, in your powerful and glorious name. What a difference. When this same brother, before he moved away from Idaho, caught a revelation of that, even as a teenager, I marvel. What a response. It would be, honey, would you please get me a cup of coffee? And I think before the words got out of his mouth, because she had a discernment that after he had eaten, he wanted some coffee, she was right there with a cup of coffee. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Lord, help me. Amen. You see, he's the one that will make the oneness between God and man. You see, it's the Holy Ghost in you and I. The light, saints. The light. When the Scripture, I hope this forever changes in this positive fashion. I hope this forever changes how you look at these Scripture because it's no longer just us trying to follow some light moving. The light is moving. The Gospel light is moving. Keep following the light. We are the light. It is the Holy Ghost, God Himself in you and I are the light to this world that we live in. Hallelujah. And I'll, I'll quickly close here. Sister Emmy, will you come? Amen. Now look at this. 
So these words I want to put out to you. God is life. Amen. God is light. God is in me. I have become God's light to this generation. Now let's turn to Revelations 22, brothers, and we are, we are closed here. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So God is clearly in His Word defining who He is in His position. One of full, complete control and authority. There's no other above, behind, underneath, or anything. He is it. Highly favored. Highly favored are they that do His commandments. Some people are like, oh, I'm just under this. This is all. Oh, no, sorry. You're highly favored that God placed something in you. To say, Lord, I want to live Your Word. I want to do Your Word. I want, I want, to, I want to be a participant. Blessed are they that do His commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Do you understand, my brother and sister, the difference? I, I hope you catch this. Go study it out. To have rights. We have it in our mind. Everybody comes before St. Peter and he thumbs through a book looking for our name. You recognize the name? Oh, here you are. There's all kinds of jokes through the years. All kinds of jokes, you know, people. But my brother and sister, it's not really that way. Because you see, the Word in us has given us full authority to the tree of life. Who is that? What is the tree of life, saints? Christ Himself. Full access to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the right to enter into the gates of the city. And it, it says, Without are dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Once again, we're looking. I, I want you to take this. We're not going to trace it all out for you tonight. I want you to take this. Once again, God chooses to bring the word through an angel. Mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Once again, restoring us back to an understanding. It's all about Him. It's not about how big our church is. Not about how much money it's got. Not about who knows who. But it's all about Him. I'm the root and the offspring of David. The bright morning star. And look, we've quoted this scripture so many times, my brother and sister. But I want you to catch this. I pray you catch this tonight. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now this might come as a little jarring thing to you. The Holy Ghost speaking to a generation. But they can't hear the truth. It's scriptural, they can't hear it. They can't hear that. And Jesus, the Messiah, the sought after one. They have words in the Hebrew for that. The sought after one stood right in their midst. And they repudiated him and rejected him. And God says, you know what? I could come down and I could move in the miraculous. And it did in Brother Brown's ministry. Look, my brother and sister, there was voices that echoed in the rafters. Not man-made. God spoke audible. But do you know where really God is speaking in this generation? The Spirit, Holy Ghost, Amen. and this bride. Are they two separate? No, sir. No, there's one. The Spirit and the bride. God using this shell, as we would call it, this vessel, and His anointed Spirit to speak through us to a world to our children to those we work with those around us you see I 
and you have become the light. Oh, I'm not making a doctrine. We're not going to come up with another part about how, woo, look at us. We're just looking at the Word. And if God is in me, hmm, did the prophet of God, did that one quote, did it, did it say what it, I thought it said? Or did I get confused that the Holy Ghost and God are one? And if the Holy Ghost and God are one, and it's Christ in you, the Holy Ghost and God and Christ obviously have to be the same. I can give you a quote for that if you struggle with that one. You see, my brother and sister, this Holy Spirit that's speaking, look how important it is. Look, I, I know this kind of comes and maybe grates on some people. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. But there's spirits moving in the age that are trying to separate once again and put bishops over men, over people, over the commoner on the pew. And I'm here to tell you that the only thing that will separate us is either we're light or we're not. That's all that matters. Everyone else has to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Go look what Brother Branham said about Mary. Amen. She was highly favored. But Brother Branham said she had to have the Holy Ghost be filled with God just like the rest of them. Amen. No exemption because the supernatural took place in her. Oh, praise God. I don't know why I've preached too long. Amen. We need a big buzzer. Hallelujah. I don't want the distraction. Please don't give me one of them things up here that goes tick, tick, tick. But maybe flashing on the screen or something. Hallelujah. No, Brother David's like, no, no, no. No, no. No way. But look at this. I, I just tonight, I wanted to bring this to you in this fashion, my brother and sister, that we could just stop and recognize who we truly are in Jesus Christ. We are not just some people trying to live a godly life. We have been a completely integrated system. Now in the farm world, my brother and sister, that's a big catch word now. We, we need to be a fully integrated. Well, hallelujah. I am fully integrated. My name was on a book. I was birthed. I was brought forth into maturity. That was part of it I cut out of this. Brother Brown talking about the church coming in her maturity. And in that maturity, I saw who I was. And in a further stage of maturity, I was able to act on who I really was. You see, if we know who we are, but we don't act on it, then there's no way we can walk in that light. But when we reach the point we come in maturity to act on the word, that's when we recognize I can loose in the name of Jesus Christ. I can bind in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, oh, my. Let's just stand worship the Lord for just a minute. Hey, Amen. I'd like to sing that little song, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Just dealing in our own soul. See, I'm not talking about a building. Not talking about Grace Tabernacle. Holy Spirit, there you are welcome in this place right here in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I asked you earlier if there was any happy people in church. Or is there still some happy people in church? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Pray. 
presence, there is healing divine. And no other power can save, Lord, but Thine. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in oh, Lord, we invite you tonight. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Truly, Lord, you are welcome. Father, we open our hearts and our lives. For Father, the light of the gospel is, Father, lighting our way. Father, that we can walk with confidence, Father, that our faith is not in us, not in this world, but Father, truly our faith is in you and you alone. For the light in us, Father, is the very light that you shone. Lord, it's not our light, it's you. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's sing that song, We Are the Generation. Uh, 385, I believe, is what Brother Jason told me before the service. It's just on my heart this afternoon. And my, I realized as you look at the words just how you can sing it and you can really chew a song up by putting your own little something. But it's personal, right? Something at the time, you know, that you, you just sing it out suddenly that becomes your song hallelujah you believe this song that you're reading right here hallelujah we are the generation oh, thank you lord we are the culmination the final voice the world will hear the coming of the lord is Overcoming sin's temptation, truth will go to every tongue and nation. We are a chosen generation. Let's sing it again. We are the generation. Oh, we let it be the common Let it be real to our hearts, Lord. Voice. The world will hear the coming of the Lord is near, living out the revelation, overcoming sin's temptation. The truth will go to every tongue and nation. We are the chosen generation. Hallelujah. Amen. That was just speaking to me today. Amen. It's by revelation we recognize who we are. Hallelujah. Now, I want to lighten your hearts a little bit as we're dismissed. And we're going to sing this little light of mine. Hallelujah. Amen. Because my brother and sister, I want you to realize the devil wants you to think that your light is this little flickering something that is being tossed by the breeze and almost going out but this little light is durable it's strong it has faith it shines when it's snowing it shines when it's raining it shines when the wind is blowing and it shines pardon me I don't like to use these words but I'm going to it shines when all hell assails me amen that's how durable this little light is. Amen. Well, 
little light of mine. Oh, this little light. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Well, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Well, hiding under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, shine it around my neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, shine it around my neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, shine it around my neighborhood. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh, let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm going to let it shine, oh, let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hallelujah. Let the happy saints clap their hands. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, saints. We look forward to Sunday. Look forward to communion. Amen. I pray the Lord just be with you. You know, sickness just seems to creep its way around. Amen. You know, it's funny what you can read when you snoop your wife's phone. But anyway, give our greetings, Brother Adam. Tell him we're praying for him. Amen. Is Titus sick also? Yeah. This deal. You know, whether this government likes it or not, the real flu is going to show up sooner or later here. You know, they're going to call it whatever they want to, but it's been around for a long time, and the devil anointed it with it. But, amen. I serve a God. You serve a God. That's a prayer answering God. In God. Amen. He said, I'll take care of you. He said he'd take us through the burning desert and through the fire. Oh, my brother and sister. Just think about the Queen of Sheba. There's going to be a lot of embarrassed people when she's sitting there on that day. Oh, I pray God help us to live that life. Let it shine, saints. I don't care. It can be the kindness. People are like, well, I, I just live in a little world. I'm a housewife. I take care of my children. But when you talk to that neighbor, you talk to that individual, you share something from your heart. That light's burning. That light's burning, my brother and sister. Let it burn. 
Let it burn. Let it burn. God bless you. We shall see you Sunday.